Christ in Jesus' name. And then it goes on in that, verse 20, in that, uh, uh, verse 25, it says, And thou shalt have, and thou shalt have, tell me, and thou shalt have, and thou shalt have. Where are you? I can't hear you. Plenty of silver. You have enough to spare, enough to spend in Jesus' name. The days have come. I said the days have come. As you are moving, did you see all those cars in the compound here? I'm waiting for you. Yours will be added. As you, in your community, did you see they say a new house is being built there? A new house is being built there. A new house is being built there. Get ready. Your, your own will be added. Did you hear that testimony of that person there? I said, I, I, I didn't have anything. I couldn't attend Monday Bible study. I couldn't attend the Thursday revival hour. I couldn't come to workers' meeting on Saturday. And yet, I'm a location pastor. And then, therefore, because of that, I resigned. I will walk from here to there long distance. And there was no money. There was no job. There was no food. It was just living from hand to mouth. But now, it's more than a manager. Is more than a director. Your own will be added in Jesus' name. If I decree it here, and you decree it over there, and then two decrees come together, you agree with me, I agree with you, there will be an explosion of miracle in your life. Because, you see, the days of needs and the days of poverty and the days of need, they are gone in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say in verse 26, For then shalt thou have that delight in the Almighty. You have your delight in the Almighty. You love him. You enjoy him. You delight in him. You delight in his word. You delight in his ways. You delight in everything belonging to the Lord. And then it goes on to say, And thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. And then thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. And he shall hear thee. Praise the Lord tonight. He will hear you. I said tonight he will hear you. And thou shalt pay thy vows. What that means is all that to say, I will serve the Lord till the end of my life. You will pay your vow. You will not go back from the Lord. You will not backslide in Jesus' name. Now, verse 28, after you have settled all that, you sweep all, all the dirty things away from your life, all the new creatures you put far away from your tabernacle. You delight in the Almighty and you are praying unto Him. Now comes what the Lord has said, and this will not be broken in your life. It says, Thou shalt decree a thing. Thou shalt decree a thing. Thou shalt decree a thing. I'm waiting for your response. Thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established unto thee. It shall be established unto thee. The, the miracle of the believer's decree is coming tonight. I said it's coming tonight. Three things very quickly before we decree, before we pray. Number one, a prevailing decree in battle. A prevailing decree in battle. There are battles of life. And there are many people that go around in the battles of life with their heads bowed. It's like the load is heavy for them. And their mind, their heart is sinking. They cannot sing the songs of Zion anymore. Tears of sorrow and tears of regret. And then their mind is weak. Their heart is weak, and the body of life has bowed them down. Instead of understanding in the battles of life like that, that's the time for you to have a prevailing decree. And I say tonight, any battle you are going through, when you stand up tonight and you make a decree, and say, Satan, enough is enough. I said, enough is enough. No crying anymore, no cringing anymore, no fear anymore. And I'm not going to be, you know, cringing for you. I say, enough is enough. And then when you say that, you say, now I have the final say. Satan will not have the final say in my life. 
Oppression will not have a final say in my life. Persecutors will not have a final say in my life. When you stand up tonight, enough is enough. It will be done in Jesus' name. A prevailing decree in battle. Number two, a powerful decree for breakthrough. A powerful decree for breakthrough. Every gate and every iron door in your life tonight will make a powerful decree. Will be opened in Jesus' name. Powerful, mighty decree. Irresistible decree. Even any other decree that the devil had made, that the Haman or Satan or anybody has made, you will reverse all those decrees tonight in Jesus' name. A powerful decree for a breakthrough. Number three, in the perpetual decree against bondage. Perpetual decree against bondage. Write the date down. The date of broken bondages. Write this date down. The day when yokes are broken permanently, perpetually in your life, they will never come back again in Jesus' name. Prevailing decree, powerful decree, perpetual decree. Tonight is the night. I said tonight is the night. Number one, what's number one? Tell me out loud, number one. A prevailing decree in battle. You know, there is a battle. There's a warfare going on. I was looking at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. It says in verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that she may be able to stand. Thank God it was stand. You know, sometimes in the past, before you knew your right, anytime the devil tries to come, you say, it's come again, it's come again. And then your knees will be knocking together. It's like you have no backbone anymore. You have straw for a backbone. It's like, you know, the, te the tears are so near. It's like they put a bag of tears, a bag of water just behind your eyelids, and then they'll be coming and coming. They'll be running. All that will be no more. Because now you know your right, and now you know the faith you have, and now you know that you can stand. You're going to stand and face that devil, and then you're going to defeat the devil with the decree in your mouth. It says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand. Thank God you will stand. I said, thank God you will stand. Be able to stand against all the wants of the devil, for we wrestle not against, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers. You wrestle. Who is going to win? I said, Who is going to win? The child of God or the devil. Who is going to win? A person washing the blood of the Lamb is wrestling with a dragon. Who is going to win? The principalities and powers, they confront the people of God. Who is going to win? The people of God are going to win. We are wrestling not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on to you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand and will stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, I will stand. I said I will stand. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, look at this, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. The weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty. We're not pleading with the devil or any demon tonight because the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal, but what? Mighty mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes. Every stronghold in your life is pulled down tonight in Jesus' name because there is a prevailing decree in your mouth and that prevailing decree will bring everything down in Jesus' name. And then it's casting down imaginations, no matter how high to the sky, we cast them down. 
on the top of any tree, we cast them down. In the river, on the river side, we cast them down. No matter where they go to make all their concussions and all their, all their assembly or covenant against your life, all those imaginations of the enemy, I cast them down tonight in Jesus' name. And then it says, uh, and every high sin that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Against the knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God is that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then you don't have assurance of salvation. Whatever it is that goes against that knowledge of God concerning the assurance of your salvation, I cast it down in Jesus' name. What's the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God is that by his knowledge, he has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Salvation is there. Sanctification is there. Holy Ghost power is there. Healing is there. Deliverance is there. And then you are not enjoying all those things given by the knowledge of God. All those things hindering you from enjoying everything provided for you. I cast everything down in Jesus' name. And then it says, I'm bringing into captivity every thought. You will not be brought into captivity. You will bring into captivity every negative thought in Jesus' name. You know, there's no power anymore that should bind a child of God. But you should bind every other power every other imagination of the devil because it says now you bring on the captivity every thought to be to the obedience of christ how will it happen by the decree in your mouth there's a decree in my mouth say that say that aloud say that aloud that decree in your mouth will be a prevailing decree tonight in jesus name see goliath coming and see david the little boy and goliath said you little boy come to me today i'm going to give your flesh to the fowls of air i will defeat you i will destroy you i will waste your life and david said you don't know who you are talking to he told saul a lion came i finished him you'll finish them a bear came i finished him. you'll finish them and he said, you go lie at today, this day. Everybody say, this day. David, the little boys, you don't know you are talking about. I'm a king in the making. He wasn't on the throne yet, but Samuel knew him to be a king. You know, many people don't understand. It was in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Already he was anointed to be a king. Saul did not know him to be a king yet. Eliab did not accept him to be a king yet. Israel did not accept him to be a king yet. But the lions of the forest, they knew that is a king in the making. He killed the champion of the forest, the lion. The bears, the animals in the forest, they knew him to be a king. By the anointing upon his life, he killed the bear already. And Saul didn't know. And his relatives didn't know. And Israel did not know. And the army of Israel did not know. But he knew, I am a king in the making. I see kings and queens over here tonight. I said, I see kings and queens here tonight. The people over there outside may not know. But David knew. Know who you are. Know what you have. And know the authority in your mouth. And so David said, you're not talking to an ordinary man. You're not talking to just a little boy here. I'm a king in the making. This day, I will cut off that head. This day, I'll bring you down. And all the earth will know there is a God that cannot fail. There is a God that cannot fail. And tonight will be that night in Jesus' name. And while Goliath was still coming, and he didn't know, he didn't know what was going to happen. David already said it. It was not the stone. It was not the sling. It was the decree in his mouth. This day I will. And he did it. You will do it tonight in Jesus' name. And so he cast down that Goliath. And I see you tonight. You're cast down. Every Goliath in your life in Jesus' name. 
that's number one when you get to any battle is the battle of the lord and the decree of your mouth will be a prevailing decree in jesus name number two is a powerful decree for a breakthrough a powerful decree for a breakthrough the word of your mouth that's the decree i'm talking about is in first kings chapter 17 first kings chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 1 it says and elisha the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab and can i can i just remind you ahab was um, what was he in israel i said what was ahab in the land of israel he was a king but a palace king he was a king political king natural king he was put there but the one that had the final authority in the mouth was elijah the prophet and when Ahab the king could not do anything here elijah had the key the one that has the word of decree we are the people that have the key and thank god there is a key in your mouth there's a key in your heart there is a key in your heart and tonight as we get that key you will open every door and any door that is bringing negative things to your life you are going to close that door in jesus name so elijah the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab as the lord liveth, and as the god of israel liveth, before whom i stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but, tell me the rest, according to my word. He said, Ahab, you cannot reverse this. Ahab, I have the key. I have the word. It's a powerful word of authority. It's a decree. And when Elijah speaks, listen. Because he had connection with God Almighty. Because of that, his words were mighty. He had connection with a God that cannot fail. Because of that, his word will not fall to the ground. It must be done. Because he had connection with the creator of the heavens and the earth. His word will create. Because he had connection with the one that called those things would be not as though they were. His words will perform something that were not as though they were. And when Elijah, a prophet, when a prophet speaks, it's going to be done. And the key is in your hand tonight. The key is in our hand tonight. He said, according to my word. And then he went away. Do you remember? There was no rain for three and a half years until Elijah came back again and he said, Ahab, get ready. There's a sound of abundance of rain. Everything in that whole nation depended on Elijah while Elijah was there. And I'm saying everything in your family depends on you. While you are there, the word of your mouth will control everything from now on in Jesus' name. When you say that there will be no evil coming from the sky, coming from the sea, coming from the village, in my family, according to my word, it shall be so. When you say the door is open, let the rain of blessing and the rain of prosperity and the rain of joy begin to fall in my family, the word is your mouth, it will be so in Jesus' name. When you say all that door of barrenness, my wife is not barren, my husband is not impotent. When you speak the word out and you're not saying the words you used to say, understand, you, the Elijah in your family, you may not be an Elijah in Africa, you may not be an Elijah in your country, you may not be an Elijah in Israel, but you are the Elijah in your family. I said you are the Elijah in your family. And no Ahab can come into your family and then just be dribbling you here and there. Bring the word out and the word of power will settle everything in Jesus' name. And then in chapter 17, verse 16. Chapter 17, we're looking at verse 16. 
it says in verse 16 days talking about the widow woman now having one son and says i'm going i'm going to cook this food and eat and die and then elijah came when elijah comes around spirit of death will run away from your family and all those negative confessions, I'm going to eat my last meal, I will die. I'm going to spend my last amount of money, I will die. I'm going to, you know, breathe my last, I will die. When Elijah comes, death will have to go away. I said death will have to go away. All the spirit of suicide, I can't see you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16, uh, because it says, and the burial of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to, you see that, according to, you see that, according to the word of the Lord, which is speak by Elijah. Elijah, you are there. Speak out the word. It will be done in Jesus' name. We're looking at second, second, uh, second Kings. Second Kings, I'm reading there from chapter 4. Second Kings, chapter 4. Because of your connection with the Almighty, your words of the mighty. Because of the connection with the one that cannot fail, you will not fail in Jesus' name. Second Kings, chapter 4, are you there? I said, are you there? were told of what now Elisha did. You know that there's, uh, there's something here now. Elijah was connected with God. Elisha was connected with Elijah. And then you remember, when Elijah was about to leave, Elijah said, Elisha, ask me what you want before I be taken away from you. And that man had been saying, I see authority in this man. I want that authority. I see power in this man. I want that power. I see the anointing that breaks the yoke when he prays. I want that anointing that breaks the yoke. I see the fullness of the Spirit of God in his life. I want that fullness. So he said, I want a double portion of your spirit to be upon me. He said, you have asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taken away, then it shall be so. And he saw him. You have seen the Lord already. I said, you have seen the Lord already. Didn't you see the Lord at Calvary? Yes, you did. That's how you got saved. Didn't you see Jesus Christ in John chapter 17? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That's how you got sanctified. Didn't you see Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 2 when he said he shall receive power and then the power came and he spoke in other tongues as they, as they were giving utterance. You saw the Lord already. Didn't you see the Lord when mountains move you saw the lord already doing great things and because you saw him power is in your life already i said there's power in your life already and now it came to the time of elisha to manifest that power your own time has now come i said your own time has now come look at chapter 4 verse 15 and he said this elisha talking now and he said uh, what, call her and when he had called her she stood in the door and he said verse 16 and he said about this season according to the time of life thou shalt embrace a son according to this time the season of life but this time next year you will embrace a son the woman had been barren all her life and now elisha gave the word of breakthrough it will happen i said it will happen and she said nay my lord the man of god do not lie unto thine handmaid and the woman verse 17 and the woman tell me tell me i told you it must happen i said it must happen everything i say tonight concerning you for good will happen in jesus name you are blessed already you are delivered already 
there is a decree of a breakthrough coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. It says, and woman conceived and bear a son at that season that Elisha had said unto, unto her according to the time of life. Your blessing, nobody will take away from you. And then eventually, notice now, first of all, it was the word of Elisha that brought the miracle child to the life of this woman. But you yourself must also have the word of power in your mouth, the prevailing decree, the powerful decree, the perpetual decree. Eventually, something happened. The child was sick. Then the child was rushed to the mother. And the, and the child died. Look at the blessing the Lord had given the woman. Now the child is dead. But there was a word in the mouth of that woman that said, Ah, my blessing will not be taken from me. I said, My blessing will not be taken from me. I said, My blessing will not be taken from me. So she left the child there and said, Husband, send me. A bull, I need to run to the man of God. What is happening? Any problem? It shall be well. Now the word is in her mouth. The word is in her mouth. And then she was going and going. And when she was near, Elisha said, Gehazi, go ask the woman, what's happening? Is it well with your husband? I said, Is it well with your husband? It is well. Before she said, it shall be well. But now, when she got near the man of God, she said, it is well. How about you? Is it well with you? It is well. Now, the million naira question, the million dollar question, the million pound question, is it well with the child? The child was dead already. The child was on the bed, dead, lifeless already. And the woman knew, but he said, I will not open my mouth to say my child is dead. My child will not die. I said my child will not die. How about your child? How about your husband? How about your wife? Is it well with the child? Tell me out loud. It is well. And then eventually she got to the man of God and said, man of God, you need to come and speak the same word you spoke originally. And Elisha got there and Elisha spoke the word. And according to the word of Elisha, the woman, that child came back alive. That's what I'm saying. The word is in your mouth. I said the word is in your mouth. And tonight you speak that word, it is well with you. It is well with your soul. It's well with your husband. It's well with everything pertaining to you in Jesus' name. Number one, a prevailing decree. Number two, a powerful decree. Number three, a perpetual decree. It's not only for you now in middle age. It's a perpetual decree. It is not only for the moment. It's a perpetual decree. You give up the decree and you say this is perpetual. This blessing I'm getting tonight is permanent. Everything the Lord is doing for me during these revival sessions it will be perpetual permanent in Jesus name. In Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 22, a perpetual decree. Don't change it in your mouth once we issue out the decree. Isn't that what kings do? When they issue out the decree, they don't, you know, they don't come up and down and then change the decree. And when you serve the devil, notice and said, enough is enough. Don't change it. When you serve sickness, the decree, enough is enough, don't change it. When you serve all the poverty around you and say enough is enough, don't change, make it a perpetual decree. And that perpetual decree will erase every negative thing out of your life in Jesus' name. In verse 22, in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Fear ye not me, says the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have 
place the sand for the for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree you understand what a perpetual decree is a perpetual decree is something that places a limitation a boundary a territory a confinement a restriction on something and the thing is permanent the lord says look at the seaside and look at the fact that the border of the sea the brink of the sea the shore is always just in that place and no matter the raging storm and no matter what i have placed a boundary there by a perpetual decree and so when you make a perpetual decree it's it's through this year next year for the rest of your life when you say sickness don't come any further stay there stand there don't come any further don't come in inside here to my house perpetual decree you are well in jesus name disappointment and failure don't come in stay there don't come any further it will be fulfilled in jesus name all those uh, demons they are running up and down dancing up and down and they, they are coming near you they say hey wait a minute there that's the line you cannot cross that line stay there that demon will not come near you forever in jesus name when calamity or plague or sickness is moving around in the community you yeah, reach that place and i'm hearing this read that place read that place this thing is coming near then you stand up the word is your man say hey plague and sickness and evil calamity stay right there a perpetual decree it will not come near you in jesus name all those plagues and all those infirmities everything will stop before they get to your doorstep I said it will stop before they get to your doorstep. Why? How do we know that? Because he that dwelleth in the secret of the Most High shall dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, He is my God, in Him will I trust. Surely, I said, surely, I said, certainly. I said, without a shadow of doubt, are we not the people of God? Don't we have the decree in our mouth? Surely, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. A perpetual decree snare of the fowler. Stay there. You are coming too near. Don't, don't come near anymore. I'm living here. I'm abiding here. And snare cannot come anymore. And then it says, and from the noisome pestilence, it shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust it shall, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come near thee. Why? Because you issue the perpetual decree. You issue the perpetual decree. And once you issue the decree, you can go to sleep because it will not pass that line. Once you give that decree, only with your eyes shalt thou see the reward of the wicked. Then it says, because thou hast said that thou hast said, made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high God, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. There shall no evil befall thee. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall. Neither shall. What are you? Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Give the perpetual decree. That's your limitation. Evil, plague, sickness, calamity, poverty, oppression, affliction. That's your limitation. This is my house. This is my family. Don't go beyond that point. It will never come. I say it will never come. Number one, number one, a prevailing decree is in your mouth. Number two, a powerful decree is in your mouth. Number three, tell me a perpetual decree. Rise up and issue that decree. Rise up and issue that decree. And 
whatever you say tonight, whatever you say tonight is the word of a king. Is the word of an anointed man, anointed woman, and I'm standing here when I issue that decree. There's no sickness, there's no infirmity in your life. When I say that, it's a powerful decree, a prevailing decree, a perpetual decree. It is done. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Speak like a king. Didn't you see how David spoke? Speak like a king. Didn't you see how Elijah spoke? Speak like the prophet of God. Didn't you hear how Elisha opened his mouth and he said the word? Speak like a real prophet of God. Didn't you hear how that woman spoke and said, It shall be well, it shall be well, and it is well, and it is well, and it is well. You speak with faith, you speak with confidence, you speak with anointing, you speak with authority, it is well. It is well, it is well, it is well. Pronounce it. Sage, sage. What of authority and what of power? What of authority and what of power? What of authority and what of power? A powerful decree, a prevailing decree, a perpetual decree, a perpetual decree, a perpetual decree. You're not the one getting sick and getting well and getting sick and getting well and getting oppressed and getting delivered and getting ensnared and getting delivered. Perpetual, 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 a perpetual decree. You're well. You're prospered. You're happy. You're victorious. You're triumphant. And the goodness of the Lord will never fail in your life. Perpetual, 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 perpetual decree. The word is your mouth. You're saved. You're a child of God. You're washing the blood of the Lamb. And you issue forth the decree. The blessing of God in your life. The blessing of God in your life. Pronounce it. Proclaim it. Prophesy it. Declare it. And say enough is enough. Enough is enough. All those negative things, they're gone. Speak the word. Don't let Satan have the final say in your life. Speak the word. Don't let Haman have the final say in your life. Speak the word. Herod, Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh, Goliath, shall not have the final say in your life. Speak the word. The enemies shall not have the final say in your life. Speak the word. The decree, a, a prevailing decree, is your decree that will prevail. It's your decree that will prevail. Where the king is, where the word of the king is, there is power. Where the word of the king is, there is power. The word of the king. The word of the king. The word of the king. Issue it out. Issue it out. Issue it out. It's a decree. And you stand in authority. And Satan will not have final say in your life. The demons will not have a final say in your life. Your past failure will not have the final say in your life. Any means of progress will not have the final say in your life. You have the authority. You have the anointing. The blood of Jesus Christ covers you. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you. The blood of Jesus Christ converts you. The blood of Jesus Christ consecrates you. The blood of Jesus Christ separates you, sets you apart as a man of authority, a woman of authority. Say the word. Say the word. Speak the word out. Don't let those enemies have the final say. Don't let all those evil doers have the final say. And don't let all those people that do not know the Lord have the final say. They are not your creator. They didn't bring you to this world. God has a purpose for bringing you to this world. Agree with God. Agree with God. And claim your authority. And stand, you tell the devil, tell the enemy, enough is enough. 
enough is enough enough is enough issue force the decree don't change it don't change it a prevailing decree a powerful decree a perpetual decree be the Elijah in your family be the Elisha in your home be the David in your own kingdom there in your family let the spirit of the Lord that indwells you the spirit of the Lord that saturates you speak that word and you serve the devil notice you've done enough enough is enough enough is enough enough is enough now I'm a child of God you cannot run over me and walk over me anymore enough is enough it's your decree that will prevail in every battle of life your powerful decree that will bring the breakthrough in every challenge of life the perpetual decree that will keep the devil and all the works of the devil at a distance in your life say it and see it done say it and see it done say it and see it done perpetual decree in Jesus name we pray the kings and the queens and the princes of the Lord in Jesus name we pray let the devil know who you are let those demons know who you are David knew who he was he knew he was anointed in chapter 16 and in this chapter 17 now you cannot treat me like you treated me in chapter 15 the anointing has come upon my life here is chapter 17 Goliath stop talking you cannot talk to me like you spoke in chapter 15 now the anointing of the king is upon your life I said the anointing of the king is upon your life and thou shalt decree a sin and it shall be established unto you in Jesus name I see your face shining and bright I see your life shining and bright. I see you cringing before. I see you as you are cringing before. I see you rising up. I see you rising up. And I see you walking. And I see you leaving Saul. And I see you facing Goliath. And I see you getting your sling ready. And I see you addressing the devil, addressing that Goliath. And I see you saying, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. The way I see your face now is not like yesterday. It's not like two days ago. I see that giant rising up inside you. And I see you now ready to say the word to sickness, to infirmity, and all those demons. I'll say, I stop you right now. And what you say will come to pass in Jesus' name. There's somebody over there, your head was boiling before as I was speaking the word. All that heat in your head is gone in Jesus' name. I see somebody over there, you were urinating before. I saw you, you know, your, your pants, uh, I'm sorry to say that in the public, was, uh, you know, uh, smelling because, you know, uh, the, the urine just comes out without your control. And I see everything stopping right now. 
I see that person over there that you know you anytime you go to the toilet it's like you know your anus will shoot out they call it pile and I see that everything is healed now in Jesus name that person over there the skin disease all the rashes in your body everything is drying up right now in Jesus name uh, there's somebody there, they call it Qatar. The Qatar has been there how many years now? Every time, every time, it's drying up right now in Jesus' name. Uh, the person there, so you did an operation and then they forgot something inside there and that thing is getting out right now in Jesus' name. The fellow that has, you know, it's like the, anytime you are blinking your eyes, it's like pain. It's terrible pain. The pain is going out in Jesus' name. Then the fellow, every time you saw it's like you are vomit, almost vomiting every time, and the vomiting is stopping right now. And then and something at the back of your head that you know was pounding, pounding, as if they want to break your head, is stopping right now in Jesus' name. And then that fellow over there, you know, an image following you every time, following you, and you'll be looking back, looking back, and that image and that demonic spirit, I send you back from that fellow in Jesus' name. I see victory for your life tonight, triumph for your life, the power in your life tonight. And I see now courage is coming inside you. You were weak before. And somebody said before that, you know, I will never be, I never do anything. I see you now saying, I, I thank God tonight, I'm going to make it. I said tonight, I'm going to make it. I said tonight, I'm going to make it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, Father, in the name of Jesus? You have given us a final word. You have given us, all oh of the word of power and the word of authority. I speak the word of authority to every life here tonight in Jesus' name. The defeat in your life in the past, I cancel it now. All the fear of your life in the past, I cancel it right now. All those negative thoughts and negative ideas, I can never do it, I can never make it, and you know, I'm useless, I'm worthless. I cancel that your life in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, all the pains in there, the pain in your body right there, that pain, I command you right now, come out in Jesus' name. The cancer of the breast in that individual, right now the mighty hand of God is, is touching you. That cancer will not survive. That cancer will not remain. Cancer, die out in Jesus' name. And I pray, be healed in Jesus' name. The brain hotness and the brain insanity right now. All that devil, all that evil spirit, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Don't come back to that place anymore. This man, I set you free. This man, I set you free. Be free in Jesus' name. Those who are watching the bed at night, one, two, three, four, five, I see you there. I command that watching of the bed, come out in Jesus' name. The woman over there with the issue of blood, the blood just what just rushing and rushing out. I command right now, be healed in Jesus' name. Skin disease and all those rashes, I command you. The Lord is touching you right now. You are healed in Jesus' name. You know, there's somebody, every time you're making progress, it's like something is pulling you back, pulling you back, pulling you back. All those hindrances, I take out of your way. All the confinement, I take it out of the way. Be successful and be victorious. Make progress in Jesus' name. And the fellow over there, your inheritance, somebody is sitting on that inheritance. I command that fellow sitting on that inheritance, get up right now. Release that inheritance. Let the blessing of the people of God come unto them now in Jesus' name. All of us who are here tonight and those who are hearing the sound of my voice, anywhere you are right now, I open your prison door. I open the gates that limits you. And I command... Come out, be make, making progress in Jesus' name. And that woman there, you've been married for exactly nine and a half years. You have married now, there's no child. And I'm asking right now that the Lord will open your womb. And the Lord will touch your husband. Receive your miracle child in Jesus' name. Lord, I bring everybody to the blessing of the Lord. Salvation. Victory. Righteousness abundance the joy of the lord and the victory of the children of god and the joy of the lord will be your strength in jesus name 
miracle everywhere miracle everywhere i release the power of god upon everyone in jesus name every decree tonight prevailing decree every decree tonight powerful decree every perpetual decree tonight will do good in your life permanently in jesus name thank you lord because i know you have answered in jesus name we pray
perdido He gustado placeres engañosos Entregado al ego y el pecado Años que hubieran producido Gloria y éxito sin límite Que podría ofrecer a mi Señor Mi pasado es olvidado He nacido de nuevo, ahora mi vida, mi tiempo, mi todo es para Él. Voy a la tierra prometida donde fluye leche y miel. En las calles de oro creme brillaré. Ahora... Estás desanimado y turbado Estás cansado de rodear Dáselo a Jesús, te ayudará A los pies de Jesús, déjalo Dáselo, 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 dáselo. Corazón herido, fracaso. Dáselo, 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 dáselo a Jesús. Tu tristeza cambiará a gozo. 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 A gozo. Why will you in bondage? Why to eat? 